one is asking about the inner product, and there's a ton of names for the inner product. Uh, you usually hear it as dot product, and they do write it as dot product A dot B there, and you also see it as scalar product, all synonymous, yay. So, and we think dot product, and we're like, oh, yay, dot product, I remember dot product. If I have two vectors, I can just find my dot product by multiplying these guys and multiplying those guys and adding them up. 15 plus 8 is 23, I know dot product, yay. But, darn, it doesn't seem to help us here. We don't have an actual vector, and, and uh, we don't have these written out like that. So, so here it's going to be helpful. There's an alternate definition of the dot product, uh, one that this kind of comes from and stems from. So if you played around with this enough, you could get this result, but it's going to be easier to start here. A dot B is also defined as the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between the vectors. Okay, so now they want to know about A dot B, and so I've got A dot B is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B, and hey, wait a second, they told me that the magnitude of A is the mag same as the magnitude of B, and they're both 1. So we'll put that in. So this is 1 times 1 times the cosine of theta. So A dot B has to equal the cosine of theta. And here's where you've got a little bit of trig involved. If you remember the cosine of theta, two ways of thinking about it. One, if you know your trig and you can picture the graph going up and down, remember the cosine of theta is always between negative 1 and 1. That just bounces up and down between negative 1 and 1. So our answer is that this cosine has to be between negative 1 and 1, and a dot b is the same thing as the cosine of theta in this case, uh, that a dot b has to be between negative 1 and 1, and that's what we see right there. Now if you're like, wait a second, trig is not on this test, how am I supposed to know that? There's enough that you're supposed to know Sokotoa rule. So if we put theta there and recognize um, we have a right triangle and the cosine is the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse, so the cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, because the hypotenuse is always bigger, the biggest side, then this guy here always has to be a fraction smaller than 1. It only equals 1 if the adjacent leg collapsed and was the same as the hypotenuse. So we can still get the same result, uh, our answer B.